become synonymous with leadership, and you may have seen her around coaching, speaking, and inspiring people on achieving success. She has defined and popularized the idea of success is within leadership, which has to date transformed the lives of a million people and helped organizations globally to grow exponentially. She is Payal Nanjani, a globally acclaimed Indian American leadership expert and author. Her books act as a catalyst, inspiring people to change the way they think about themselves and to be the best versions of themselves. She's been an advisor to some of the most successful leaders and companies in the world. With nearly two decades of industry experience, Pyle is one of the most called upon speakers and executive coaches in the corporate world for anyone who wants the best results. Her keynotes and workshops show you the precise methods on how you can achieve success and get to the next level no matter what. Pyle has been featured on Global Magazines, America's news channels and radio for redefining leadership. Her aim is to help the maximum number of people in the world experience success in their professional lives. Pyle lives with the motto of success is within and believes that success can be achieved with speed and serenity. Are you ready to achieve unstoppable success and become a world-class leader? Good afternoon, everyone. So nice to be here. This is my second year here and whenever I fly down to India, it's always a pleasure to be here and speak at this forum which is um, organized by Dr. R. L. Bhatia and his team and Asif and thank you so much for these kind words of introduction. I'm sure none of you are going to remember me based on what you saw about me, right? Okay. So here's how I want you to connect with me. My name is Payal and I am your good friend and mentor. Is that easy to remember? Yes? Fantastic. And I want to know about you, so I want to also know your names. Okay? So at the count of three, loud and clear, can you all give me your names? Come on. One, two, three. Okay, nice to know you all. Now, this is a very interesting room and I always find, uh, you know, I'm very enthusiastic whenever I'm speaking on this forum. So what I want you to do is, I want you, I want you to look at your partner, okay, look at your partner and tell them, today onward you are a winner. Can you tell them, today onward you are a winner. Just look at your partner and tell them. And, and you know what, also, also go ahead, also go ahead. And you're telling to your own self, that's it. <laughs> also go ahead and tell that same partner, huh? it's high time for you, my friend. Now, the reason I asked you to do this, my friends, is not to create a rara moment or make you feel any motivated. I know you all are motivated and I am not a motivational speaker by any chance. The reason I asked you to do this is because 18 years back when I stepped out of corporate America to do what I am doing, the more I began to coach some of these very successful leaders and executives in the world, the more I began to do these trainings for companies and their leaders, very early on in my career, I realized that the real game of leadership is completely internal. And so how far you will reach in your career, how much your teams will accomplish, how much your teams will work, how much you will accomplish is dependent not just on your skill sets, your hard work, your expertise. Everyone does that. It is dependent on three major leadership elements. Number one, how well, how effectively can you lead yourself? Number two, how well can you manage your thought process? And number three, how quickly can you change your and upgrade your habits and behaviors to adapt to an ever-changing environment, a business environment? And so it's the, it's the alignment of these three elements, my friends, that will decide where each of us in this room will reach and where your teams will reach. Let me ask you something here. How many of you here with the show of hands would say that you know it from inside that you can accomplish much more and do much more than you are currently doing? How many, how many hands do I have in the room? Oh, almost everyone. Okay. You know, let me tell you, I've always seen that 
most of us, in fact, all of us, we want to achieve something, we want to get there in our corporate world, in our business world, everything. But the sad reality, and my, in my fourth book, I have written this, that the sad reality is that only a very few percentage of the people will actually achieve what they want to achieve. Despite the fact that we are in an age of resources, information, and everything is available, only a few percentage of the people will reach there. And there is a reason for that. You know, one of the questions that I commonly get asked, especially in forums like these, or when I'm doing book signing or taking pictures, one of the most common, quickest question that people ask me is this. That, Payal, if there was one quality that you would say everyone should develop while they are in the workforce, what would that quality be? And my friends, if I could come, in fact, I leave the stage and come and talk with you, not to you. So please excuse me, I won't be standing up there. But if I was to come and talk to each of you and tell you exactly what that quality would be, my friends, that quality would be of you knowing how to win the game. How to win the game. Do your people know how to win the game? And I learned this in a very, very hard way in my own career life. I'll take you back in time. 1998, I completed my MBA in human resources. Now, don't calculate my age based on it, okay? I have a 22-year-old daughter, okay? So you almost know what my uh, age is heading. So I instead of joining these huge American companies, I decided to work in small, mid-sized firms. And I joined an advertising firm. Everything was great. Fantastic people, great team, was earning well. The only problem I had was with my boss. Okay? Now, not that she wasn't good at her work. When it came to delivering the results, oh, she was excellent at it. But when it came to managing the people, she was one boss you just did not want around you. And so every time there was friction between her and me, I continued. I knew I will not get a job anywhere. In the year 2000, America was going through the economic crisis also. One year down the line, I was, I was really tired of this toxic environment. I said, I cannot take it anymore. And I did what each of us would have done. I submitted my, correct, I submitted my resignation letter, not knowing exactly where I'm going after this. But the vice president of the company, he called me in. You know, when you're in a small company, everybody knows you. So he called me in. He said, Fire. Mr. James, who's, who was the CEO of the company at that time, he said, Mr. James is very happy with your work. Why don't we give you another role in an independent department and see where you go from there? I said, fine, fabulous, I'll take it. There was absolutely no other choice I had either. So I took up that role, and from there, everything changed. You know, I moved into the leadership roles, I grew in the company. And then something happened in the year 2004, which I still will never forget. It gives me goosebumps. That year, if that incident would have not happened, I think it, I would not be even doing what I'm doing. In 2004, Mr. James, he announced just before Thanksgiving holiday that, we, that he will be meeting with every person in the leadership team one-on-one, -on -one, five minutes. I was damn happy because I had never had this opportunity with him. So the moment he came in, the first thing that I said is, Mr. James, thank you so much for helping me to grow and move ahead in my career. He looked at me, his smile vanished, and he said, I haven't helped you to grow at all, Payal. In fact, you have got yourself stuck, and I really am concerned about your growth and success in corporate America. I was confused. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know what to do. He looked straight into my eyes and he said, Payal, just listen to me for a few minutes. He said, you know, Payal, undeniably, each of us in our career life is going to face problems and challenges. Everyone, nobody will be left. He said, but where you will reach in your career, each of us will also be given four options in our career life. Option one, you work heads down, ignore everything else, just take your salary, paycheck, and be happy. Keep going. Option two, you quit, go find another job, another uh, country, another boss, another department. Option three, you try to fit in, try to make everyone happy, but every single day you come to work in a state of frustration. And option number four, you make yourself so powerful, you raise your leadership level to such an extent that outer circumstances and people cannot impact you. You 
learn how to win the game by yourself. He said, everything in your career life, where you will reach, where your company will reach, where your teams will reach, will depend on the options you choose. That's the difference, Payal, between average and exceptional leaders. And it's up to you to fill this gap. Five minutes over, he wished me happy Thanksgiving, left. And I'm sitting there, not even wishing him back. And even today, when I talked to him, I said, I had never wished you. But I'll tell you something, my friends, that hit me to the core. And I'm telling you, had this incident not happened, had I not learned how to choose option number four, I would never have been named as the only women from India to be an executive coach, write books on leadership, and speak about leadership in a completely white male-dominated industry. And I share this with you, not to impress you, but to express to you that everyone here who raised their hands, everyone in your teams who want to achieve something, have no other option to choose but option number four. You make yourself so powerful, you raise your leadership level to such an extent that outer circumstances and people cannot overpower you. You win the game. Winning. That was the first time I heard this word in the corporate world, winning. Tell me, my friends, when you hear the word winning, which industry comes to your mind? Which industry comes to your mind? Which field comes to your mind? Sports. And that's exactly what happened with me. I, I started, at those times, Google was books. So I went to the library, started searching, winning. What's winning in the corporate world? Well, there was nothing. It was all about sports, about coaches, and there was only one book by, by Jack Welch that spoke about winning, and that was on GE. So where is winning? So it took me many years, it took me many years of hard work, of research to get the third book out that was titled as Win the Leadership Game. And the, the funniest part is the publisher is asking me, Payal, why do you have such a bold title of the book for the third book, Winning the Leadership Game? It's very bold. I said, because people in our corporate world have forgotten to win. All of us, our teams, we, everyone, we know how to survive. So we have this mentality of blaming, of not taking accountability, of quitting option number, um, number two, quit, work heads down, survive. A lot of us, a lot of us in this room are also good at thriving. We are in an autopilot, we've got that expertise, that functional expertise, we know exactly what to do. Oh, you ask us in our sleep, functional expertise, that's what I have. So we are thriving. Winning? Winning is different. Winning means how many of you and your team members are relentless? How many of them are the ones who can, who can cross all challenges? They come to you with a hundred of options and solutions. They are the ones who are unstoppable. They are the ones who know exactly where they are heading to. They have a vision and, and position titles and, uh, and uh, salary are not the ones that attract them. Winning in the corporate world is very important, my friends. But sadly, we have forgotten that we are here to win. So what do we do? We hire people. Okay, so today we have hundreds and thousands of hands working in our organization. How many of us are hiring people and transforming them? We are training them. We are training them. We have trained leaders. We have trained people in our organization. Where is the transformation from survival to thriving to winning? And winning, my friends, is based on a fundamental foundation, which is you take yourself with you everywhere. That's the foundation of winning. This entire concept of winning became my book. This entire concept of winning became a course for the corporate leaders that I start taking. But here's something I want you to experience before I leave today. Just stay with me on this, and I want you to just follow my instructions. Can you do that? Yes, yes? OK. I want you to just sit back, relax with your eyes closed. Can you do that for me, please? I, I'll be here until I finish. Everything will be fine. And what I want you to do is, I want you to just imagine that you are walking towards an ocean, and you have a container in your hand. And with the show of your hands, can you demonstrate that container high up in the air for me, please? Just take your container and put it up high up in the air, please. And you're walking with that container to your ocean. 
Now I want you to keep your hands where it is and just look around the room. Keep your hands where it is and look around the room, please. Open your eyes and look around the room. What do you see? Different container size, okay, what else? How, how you're holding, what else? Strong grip. Now, the someone who said that the different sizes of containers, did I ever mention what the size of the container should be? Yet many of us chose small, extra small, medium. Surviving, thriving, winning. That's exactly where we are heading to. We need to have a mindset of winning. My friends, the problem in today's corporate world is to wrap this up. The problem in today's corporate world is not how we need to innovate more. The problem is how do we make that internal shift for ourselves and our teams so that we can go a long way. In conclusion, my friends, Each of us, and this is something I say it from my heart always, each of us has a very limited time in the corporate world. None of us are here to stay forever. Not you, not me, none. But our corporate world teaches us to put our hands out for everything. Give me more, more respect, more salary, more positions. We have learned how to ask rather than become that person to whom everything comes. And this, my friend, is not a hand of a leader. It's a hand of a victim where we only learn, uh, uh, learn how to ask. I want you today to leave in a different state. I want to leave you in a state of winning. And I'm going to do exactly that. I want you to forget your positions and titles today just for a few seconds and up on your feet. Everyone, come on up on your feet. And I want you to put your hands out, not for asking, but a grip of a, of a leader. And I'm going to just tell you I'm going to ask you that for success, you have to be and you have to tell me the word winner. Yes, yes? But when you say the word winner, I want you to take your hand and your arms and reach out. Now, don't look at the person to the left and the right. Oh, they went only so much, so even I should do that. That's up to you. Yes, yes? Oh, come on. For success, you have to be a winner. You have to be a? You have to be a? Love you all. Thank you so much. I know time was very limited. I wanted to rush through and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I hope to stay connected with all of you on LinkedIn and thank you so much for this little time that I had with all of you. God bless everyone. Thank you.